What's up, Familia? I am the Uncanny Dayspring. I am Sean, a.k.a. Ludbearing Lad. I am the Uncanny Michael Ham. <laughs> I am the uncanny Super X Luigi. <laughs> well, that is a lot of uh, original thinking there, guys. We were <laughs> given five seconds to come up with. I almost said I was the adjective list Blinkman. <laughs> <laughs> you could have said I am the amazing Hammy. I'm the astonishing Luigi. I'm just saying. Well, listen, we can't all be as creative as you using okay. the same one for every podcast. <laughs> I have zero creativity, but... We are here tonight, assembled, to talk about Marvel Legends, specifically trying to get someone, <clears throat> Latvarian Lad, on the side of collecting Marvel Legends, because what Latvarian Lad does is collect action figures, takes them out of their packaging, and then super glues them to an Ikea mirror he That's bought right. in like 2006, <laughs> and we have dubbed that the Ugly Mirror. I implore job. anyone who's listening to watch like go to the youtube because you don't understand how ugly this thing is this is so good i don't know what you're like you know what all you people with your in package action figures and pristine yeah there's nothing better than slabbing on like massive amounts of glue i, and I do egg. take mine out of the package uh, but i would never super glue them okay to be <laughs> fair the ones at the top are not super glued <laughs> no, it, it, the, everyone else is like that. Is like a fucking graveyard of collectibles there. Like you've just yeah. slaughtered everything. You have the Captain Planet figures. Apocalypse. <laughs> I've got three Captain Planets. The best was um, when we were at New York Comic Con. I saw an original Lion-O in the package from Thundercats, and it was something like it was like ridiculously expensive. I think it was like five hundred dollars. And I was like, oh, I've got two of those glued to the mirror. <laughs> What is that? What is that? There's like a, the phobia of holes. Like people oh, have a phobia yeah, of yeah. holes. That's what your mirror gives me. Like it makes my skin crawl. I like, ugh. I'm the big bad end game villain for all collectors. I'm just going to go and steal all your collections. <laughs> Find your rare one of a kind that you got off of eBay. And I'm just going to glue it on the corner. You probably have the Toy Biz Red Skull that was a chase figure just super glued right there. He's got at the bottom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I use him as a doorstop. Yeah. <laughs> I love your big final boss energy right now, Sean. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take all of you on. Oh, you're going to take us all on, are yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're going to put that before. behind a paywall. Yeah. <laughs> That's a paywall. That's New York paywall Comic Con all over again. <laughs> so can i ask what is the origin of this ugly mirror before we dive into okay. selling you on legends like so where where did this mirror come from how did it get there with your wall and how does your husband allow this monstrosity in your beautiful apartment okay so the origin uh i think it was right when i moved to london and i was shopping on Oxford Street, and I don't remember the store, but the store had a mirror like this in it, and it was a whole bunch of like random figures, and the entire mirror was spray, spray painted like a blue. And I thought it was really, really cool, and I said, "Oh, I could probably redo that." Um, so I bought, and it was the IKEA mirror that the store had. Like it was literally like this mirror with stuff glued to it. Um, so I bought the mirror. I bought a whole well, like when I went back to my let's say house in Montreal, whatever next trip, I just grabbed a whole bunch of toys I had from a kid, brought them back in a bag and then just went on eBay and found job lots of like cheap toys. Um, so the idea was all to spray paint it one color, but once I put it all together, I was like, oh, I kind of like it. Um, and it's the only kind of geeky thing that I'm allowed, I guess, to display in the house. So the only it's, it's all self-contained within this this mirror. Well, that's just sad. Yeah, I'm Sean, sorry. you can't play that. You can't play that card this early. I know you're like, this is the only thing I'm allowed to display. Well, you know what? To your Paul, we are going to take one of your rooms so and we're going to turn it into a geek room and you're going to be displaying action figures and all your geeky stuff, all your cosplay. and everything. We're going to get yeah. you set up like Luigi's. So what, what this actually story is, is, this is a Final Fantasy game where you think I'm the end boss, but actually the last minute you realize it's not me. You have to convince my husband to let me do all this in the final <laughs> act. So, um, but you still have to convince me because I'm not an action figure collector. Um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd sell me on it because I don't know what you guys do with them. 
Wait, have you never been an action figure collector? Like, we're talking ever since you were a kid, you did not... I'm, oh, I'm no. sure you had action no. figures. Yes. Did you collect them religiously? No. When I was a kid, I feel like I collected them like a kid would, and I played with them. Okay. But then, like, when I became too old to do that, I stopped buying them. Okay. Fair. Okay, listen, that was kind of shady. Old. Too old. <laughs> yeah. Well, well no, no. You're like too old to, like... Right? Too old <laughs> to, like... You know what I mean? Like like create stories with them in my head and make them fight or whatever you know like i don't know what do you do with action figures Never okay just demonetize i know that's it this this that's it we're canceled now well all right wait let luigi have you been mm. collecting figures since you were a kid what's your history with like x-men marvel legends figures in yeah, general I, I was like obsessed with x-men figures as a kid i had a neighbor that lived across the street from me that had like all of them and I was always so jealous. So when I became an adult and I saw Marvel, I, it was the Juggernaut wave and I saw Marvel Legends and it was the rogue figure in the Juggernaut wave. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, this is actually like painted really well. And it just looks really like it, it, it looked a little bit better than your average action figure, the, the Legends. And so I was like, OK, I, I'm sold. And then after that, I've like collected. I started collecting all the Marvel Legends lines and then I just don't have the space so i kind of got rid of everything that's non-x-men i think i have a fantastic four shelf mm -hmm. um but it's the x-men and fantastic four that's it how about you hammy when did you i should know this off the top of my head but i can't remember when did you start I, collecting I, legends it's a pandemic thing right for you yeah that's when it got it got i got back into it because i my first one though was uh marvel select colossus i just oh, saw that yeah. at a store and i was like this is the nicest figure i've ever seen in my life and i bought that and then i was like well that juggernaut wave as every x-men toy collector started with i was like well that would look good with this colossus and i pretty much started there i collected them back when they were like toy biz and everything too but i got out of that but during the pandemic i got like deep into it like i started buying lots of marvel legends selling marvel legends i was like a toy flipper i was buying like lots for like two grand and then like trying to sell them for like four separately and yeah it's how i made most real yeah it's how i made most of my money during the pandemic <laughs> oh my god so wait so so you got this juggernaut wave we're talking like 2020 no the juggernaut wave is so marvel legends was going through a period where it, it, the line is really interesting in terms of its history. When it was sold off to Hasbro, the line sort of started dying slowly. And then it came back with the return of Marvel Legends, where we had a Hope Summers and a Thor wave. And then no more X-Men because of the Fox Disney film rights situation. When Disney started having talks about buying Fox, we got our first X-Men specific Marvel Legends wave, which was a juggernaut wave. And that was, I think, 2017. <laughs> Let me look it up really. Yeah, I think it, I think it was 2016. 2016. And so. it, it had Kitty, it had Jean, Celine Dion, Jean, Juggernaut. <sighs> yeah, it was a really the best great man. Game. The best man. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. just super. It was that was like kind of like what's given rise to our modern X-Men collection. So I'm not, I'm not shocked that that was a gateway drug for a lot of people. But I, I, okay. So my question then, Hami, this isn't something that you've carried on since you were younger. So what, like, was it just like, oh, this is a cool like figure. And, and that was it. You like, your first one was free and then you became addicted. Yeah. I mean, more or less. Yeah. I, I, I had the juggernaut wave in 2016. So when it was in stores, I bought it. But I never took out of the package. I never displayed it. It just went into a storage bin. I just knew I had to have them. Then I got a Colossus. And I was like, this is the best figure, but he needs friends. And I was like, oh, my God, I have those figures from four years ago. And so I went down and I got them. And then I set them up and I was like, this is amazing. And then I went online and I was like, there are more X-Men. I can find yeah. more now. I can get Archangel. I can get, <laughs> there were so many by this point. So I just started buying them. And I was like, just the 90s. We're just doing the 90s X-Men. And then I was like, okay, we're just doing everyone who was ever in Secret Wars, which is <laughs> for everyone. anyone who knows everyone. Um, and then I that's when I got into flipping because I didn't want Secret Wars anymore. I wanted more X-Men. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I think 
specifically Marvel Legends is such a different beast compared to some of the other like toy lines. Like Hammy and I were just talking about the Batman and Robin figures that McFarlane just dropped the pre-order for. But I think Marvel Legends, it just it just offers a combination of like artistic appeal, correct character variety, and there's a lot of community behind it. So it's almost like reading the comics, but collecting them now as small effigies that you can display in your in your house. And I don't know, I, I'm trying to pinpoint why collecting, like actually holding that tiny effigy of a character means so much. But I think it's because the figure itself is beautiful. It's a work of art and it's highly articulate and imposable. For me, I also think that we were like deprived of any X-Men merch for such a long time. And the juggernaut wave was like, wow, X-Men, X-Men merch. I, I need this because I haven't seen anything. And we were bombarded with Avengers stuff from the movies. So it was finally nice to get some X-Men merch. Yeah, I mean, we were so deprived. There was an embargo unofficially with the X-Men that they weren't allowed to be in like t-shirts or any merch that Marvel was put putting out because of the film rights. And I think that return with the juggernaut wave just sparked this like love and interest for so many of us. Did did you guys did you guys collect action figures young Luigi and and Hammy like when you were younger did you go after like waves of not only X-Men but like Ninja Turtles for example? I had uh I, I did the original, I don't, I don't know what the line was, but the original X-Men wave, mm-hmm. like the original X-Men figures, the blocky figures. Yeah, like with the Colossus whose arms just go up yes, like this. Yes, the Colossus yeah, figure with, one. The, with, yes. the, with the weights, yeah. yes. um, the Iceman with the with the sled. Where you so had to I, put the water in, like yeah. the freezer. I had it, I had like those, but you know, I was a kid, so I didn't have the disposable income, so it was really up to my parents to get, uh, you know, or what I could snatch from my um neighbor across the street <laughs> what i you, rebought that whole set as like a grown-ass adult in like 2012 mm-hmm. and when i moved out my mom found them and sold them because she thought they were my old ones from when i was a kid <sighs> not knowing that furious. i had spent so much money rebuying them and i rebought like every version so there's like five of those ice men because the first one that came out had a round peg hole then the second one came out and its joints would break in the freezer so they released a third one but that one would get yellow over time so they released a blue one i had all of them my mom sold them for like three dollars each oh my god your mom is vile she hates you i <laughs> correct correct she sold them to me and they're on the mirror yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Mom, oh, Hammy, yeah. savage so no I've, well, I've been a figure collector forever like as a kid it was everything Same. i wanted yeah I, I i can pinpoint the first figure i went after as a kid and it was the original wave one teenage mutant ninja turtles april o'neill she was one per case i called up play world i don't know if you guys remember play world i called them up every day there was a woman named dolores who i called and she when when april came in put her aside just for me and since then i've been such a collector and i think it's the thrill of the chase i think it's just the culture of it even with batman returns um the catwoman figure that was released i remember like pushing a kid out of the way and taking it from him (laughs) i was was savage i remember screaming and crying on the floor (laughs) till my mom bought me toys i was a temper tantrum kid (laughs) but i mean like okay let's go back to the fact that you bought all these ice men with that are basically the exact same figure like so Uh What does one do with all this? Like, if they're all the same, minus one has a round peg, one doesn't turn yellow. Like, like do you display them all together? What's the like? Yes, well, eventually. Oh my god, they just end up in plastic bags. These, this is, these are my just my ice men. These are all my triples and doubles. I have my ice men display there, and but those will be displayed together okay. eventually. Look so at they the are display there, though. That's what you do with them. You display them like that. And do you okay, guys? Gotta, do you guys? Yeah. Do you guys redo your displays, or is it like this is a sacred display? It's done now. Or do you like every few months go like, okay, it's time to shift their positions and like? I feel like I'm talking to an alien. <laughs> it's it's it, it sounds I feel like, like, like I someone's... just don't understand. <laughs> it, it feels like someone's like so when you add one and one and it makes two like is that how you do it or what 
<laughs> but I, I feel like if we agree. released this episode beyond Power of X Men listeners, I don't know if I'd be the alien, Hammy. No, Fair. I'm sorry. No, Fair. you would be. Listen, everyone has collector like like has some kind of thing they collect, right? Whether it's cars, whether it's I don't know, like baseball <laughs> hey richie rich yeah. <laughs> well, i don't collect cars my dad does but like oh i get it like he has them displayed in the garage and i i understand his love for it this is the same thing with action figures okay but i do want answers to this luigi yeah. do you change up your display i do every so often and of course you have to when you get new characters added to the roster um, but I do have like where I like them. So I have like my nineties X-Men front and center and then like the X-Force and the X-Factor and Excalibur and Alpha Flight. They're all like, kind of like surrounding the nineties group. I love that so much. I love doing those displays where they're specific to like an era. And that's why you also update them, Sean, because you'll get more characters that you're missing. Right. Like maybe right now I have my Excalibur team you know, with the 90s X-Men, but the second we get a Rachel, Excalibur is getting its own shelf, for example. Yes. But back during the darker days of Marvel Legends, I bought the prototype of White Phoenix, and we didn't really have enough to do your own shelves for each character. And my entire X-Men display centered around the X-Men and White Phoenix dead in the center and all of them kind of like praising her. As it should be. <laughs> Thank you! No, <laughs> how many like, times yeah. do we have to hear this White Phoenix story? Oh, and also, remember that summer everyone had Defenders Fever and they released that box set of the Defenders? The Defenders had their own shelf for me as well. Like, And we're talking like Jewel, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Daredevil, the Netflix Defenders. So are you like all of Marvel Legends? You collect all of them? Yeah, I try to get as many. I do, I'm not that big in Avengers proper, yeah. but you know, if there's... If there's an IP going on or a movie that I'm really into, I'll collect those. And and even with the Netflix heroes, I did not buy the the MCU versions of those figures. I just bought like the comic figures. Yeah, for me, it was characters. only the comic. Even when yeah. I was doing a little bit, it was only the comic figures. I yeah. do have like a little corner of West Coast Avengers next to my Fantastic Four. Oh, yes. Oh, the, I love that. The classic Hercules is pretty hot. <laughs> Oh my god. I oh, I've got the classic Hercules. He's right there, yeah. Bitch, what are you doing? They're like, no, you're triggering everyone. There has to be a trigger warning. You're like, oh, I so, do have that. It's right there. Super glue right there. Yeah, no, he's on the top. He's 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 in between Angel, uh, so it's Angel, Spike, and Drusilla. Then it's Hercules next to He-Man. Yeah. I'm looking huh? for a photo of your ugly uh, your ugly mirror, Sean. I think you sent it to me on Latvarian Lab, yeah. didn't you? No, and I've got, like, of the Marvel Legends, I've got basically the people that I've cosplayed. So I've got, like, Cyclops at the top. Oh, I've so you actually buy... Well, sometimes. Yeah. Like, like if... And, and you like, I'm buying this to actually glue on my meat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, so Cyclops, a friend of mine, gave it to me for my birthday this year. So I put him on the top. Thanks um, for the gift. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I do have, actually... Um, I have this gigantic Doctor Doom that's in a box, and he must be like this big, and he's in a black cape and cowl, which we're still like, I don't think I've ever seen him in the comics in, and he's like, I don't know, he's quite fancy, a friend gave it to me as a gift ages ago, but and I'm gonna like, smash it. it. No, because he was like, it looked so expensive that I was like, well, I don't think I should glue this one to the mirror, so he's in a box in my bedroom. Let's see. Hey. I think it's um, I think that's the God Doom. Is that it? I'm trying to look. No, I think here. he's like like Stealth Doom or something. All right, let's see. I'm looking right here. He's quite fancy. If it's a figure, I think it is. It's going for sixteen ninety nine. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, hold on. I mean, I'll take show, a look. But show us, show us a figure. Show us a figure. Oh well, okay. Do you want to put on puzzle? I go grab it. I'm. Right. You go get the figure. I'm going to explain my shelves because okay. I want to. Go yeah, explain my shelf. beautiful shelves. So I am mad at Hasbro when they don't do stuff like release a Rachel or a Feral because then I do have to reorganize my shelves like three years later. Yeah. When they yeah. release or when they're like, so here's a new toad. And I'm like, fuck, I have to redo my whole villain shelf. And they're like, four months later, they're like, and a new avalanche. And I'm like, again, okay, let's re let's redo the brotherhood one more time. Oh, here's a new blob. Okay. 
great. That no. blob, Dude. that that blob that we got this year is so good. Although I still it's love incredible. that that build a figure blob. All right, let's see this. Okay, this is all right. So these are one of the more like premium figures. Okay. Oh, uh, that is one of the nicest figures I've ever seen. Oh my god! Yeah. And you're just gonna get your glue gun and put it on your mirror? Now. No, see, I didn't glue him. Um. Because he looks a little, he looks quite expensive. So I was like, I feel bad doing this one. And he's quite big. Oh. So he... Okay. So this is, I wanted to ask you about this because the figures are like $25. So do you think that's a reasonable price for, for a toy? Yeah. I guess I mean, <laughs> it's a lot more expensive than, than when I was a kid. That's for sure. Like oh, I think they used to cost. That like was about, like... 50 years ago. Yeah. So that's not fair. Um, <laughs> I guess like, yeah, I guess feels reasonable okay I mean, my plan, and, yeah i'm not here i don't i'm not gonna like try and talk you into marvel legends i just want to take away every reason why you won't and then we'll only be left with why you should but so, expense, think, like, co so collecting money is no matter to this man <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> collecting don't you find though like so i used to play when i was younger i used to play hero click do you know what that is yes oh, yes, yes, yes of course yeah and the amount of money that I sank into hero clicks. I mean, and then you realize like, oh God, like it is, yeah, it's just all like, it's like a drug, right? And then you wean yourself up and you're like, well, I'm saving a lot of money, not uh, not buying every brick of every set that comes out. And then if I don't get the ones I want, go on eBay and try to find them. And um, yeah. Oh, know, like... Trigger warning. <laughs> oh God, oh boy, that hits too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's like stacks of Pokemon cards over here that I. Oh, I been... saw you in your Comic Con dealing with the vendors. And... Oh, Wait, shivers. you saw Hammy like going to vendors for Pokemon cards and haggling? Yeah. I would have given. I was not. Kind of haggle. Best. That is content right there. <laughs> um, you know, I, I just wanted to say something about the price point. It's it's interesting where Legends are right now with prices because when I started collecting back in 2002 Legends, they were $7.99. In fact, I want to say even $6.99. And now the price is about that $25, $26. It's, it's insane how much they've gone up in, in pricing. But I will say currently, when we were talking about Giant Man, I feel Giant Man was a bargain considering two Legends are about $50. So... But yeah, I if I actually at... like that, I, I would have, I would have same contributed. To... Same. So did I... you, did you guys back it? No, no, God, no. <laughs> no. Wait, I backed it because I was like, you know what? We saw it at New York Comic Con. I wanted to support it, and then when I saw it was going to be its goal, I was like, well, I really, I have. What am I going to do with with this figure? And that's it. But sh but but Scott, who was supposed to be on this episode, um, he backed it. Drag him. Drag, drag him. Drag him. Drag yeah. him. <laughs> Where are you, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> Scott's uh, like, I'm stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I do think, too, like, if you think of, they're more expensive, but let, look, I would imagine the demographic actually is a lot of adults versus kids yes. nowadays. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yes. the toys, I read the stat actually recently for work, and it was like <laughs> the majority of toys are actually bought by adults rather than children for a lot of these types of things. So it's true. Um, it's so painful when you go to like the aisles of Target and you see another like collector there looking for the same shit you're doing, and you just make eye contact with them, and you it's it is the weirdest thing. It's both shame, excitement, territorial, and then there's a kid kind of walking by, looking at the toys, and you're like, move out of the way. <laughs> but here's you the must, question: though, must be new to these aisles. I, I, I do think they're a little expensive to give a kid. I agree with you. And Hasbro knows this. That's why we have different iterations of these yeah. characters and rollouts of, of these different waves. But I guess kids probably aren't like, for them, it's less collecting. Like, oh, I need the set because I need the set and I want to make a display. Yeah. It's more like, no, oh, I love the Hulk. So give me the Hulk and I'm going to. When I was a kid, though, with... I wanted them, though. I wanted to complete the sets and I wanted the team building. Sorry, I cut you off. Well, I just think like if I look at my like my nephews, I mean they'll just merge Spider Man with Batman with I don't know a My Little Pony, and it, so I don't think they're really focused on you know creating X Force and making sure that every member is there. Gone. That's horrible. I have no faith in in the next generation if they're doing that. How <laughs> dare you mix your Batman and Spider Man <laughs> figures? What's, my nieces are the same, by the way. My nieces like they just have a big 
pile of Barbie and Brat dolls and like Frozen. And there's no distinction, which when I was growing up, everything like my Batman shelf, my Ninja Turtles, my Burger King kids toys. Do you remember the Burger King kids? Yes. Yes. They used to sell figures of them. No, Hammy's like, I wasn't born until 2002. But... <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so can I have a question? Like, you're just talking about going to Target and like the joy of finding them mm -hmm. as collectors. Because uh, my my initial thought would be like, well, just go on eBay and cherry pick the ones you want. Is that yeah. like? Does that like take away from that? <laughs> <laughs> Hammy is so spicy today. Yeah, how, you got yeah. really excited when we were talking about Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. But is it like is it more expensive to cherry pick on eBay? Is it less expensive? I, I pre order all of mine. I, I I like if I see it in the store, I'll like cancel my pre order. But I I don't like the feeling that I might not get that figure that I want. That yeah. makes sense. So the way Legends has been handled recently is very different than how it has been historically. We had no pre-order links. Back in like the mid like mm. 2000s there were no pre-order links. Even stop it Hammy, stop it. <laughs> this is Grandpa Dayspring giving Marvel Legends history here. We have it easy today. Yes, in today's world, pre-order everything. But back in the day, you could not pre-order and the stores got them first. So you would go to the stores, you would check online. There were various apps to see, you, you, you get the SKU number and you see if they have the figures in stock. You go there, they don't have them out. So you ask them to go in the back and get them. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's it's fine. And yes, it is odd being a man in your mid thirties going up to a Target employee who's like a summer high school like temp worker. And you're like, hey, do you have this Marvel Legends Rocket Raccoon Jean Grey in your back? Thank you. And they come back and it's the wrong figure and you have to go back with them and actually pull it. <laughs> but I think it's the thrill of the chase. That's what we call it. It's the chase. And I remember Marvel Legends Series 6 from Toy Biz was announced like the, on, on the Foosh. They said that... Um, true and times square had gotten it so we all got there at like six in the morning the following day and the toys r us employees opened up the doors and they played the go speed racer go theme oh, song amazing. and we all ran up to the marvel it's just fun and then you meet like people from the community i, I don't know i love it it's a wonderful subculture eh. We're no, really, <laughs> really that's what you have to say hammy no no oh my God. I where do you get yours, Hammy? Well, I we don't have like a cool Walmart. <laughs> I live in Canada. We don't have a Target. We don't have a Walgreens. So all the exclusives we just don't get. Okay. They might show up at a GameStop or something. But I don't know. I've I I'm I'm a mix. There is something thrilling about seeing the toy in the store. Just last week, I didn't pre-order any of the X Men ninety seven toys because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think they would sell very well. Uh, and then this is the other reason I don't like to pre pre buy or pre order because sometimes they go on sale for like dirt cheap later. So I like yeah. to play a little gambling where I'm like, is that character popular enough? I, or I do I the wait same. So it's ten dollars. Um, but I was in Walmart the other day and I saw the Magneto from the '97 line, and I was like, oh, this figure is incredible. Like I'm going to buy two of them and replace both of the Magnetos in my display 100 percent, they're just so much better but i wouldn't have known that if i didn't go to the store i just would have kept the ones i have now there i'll never also forget finding the marvel legends walmart exclusive wave in the store there is that element of joy that you just browse the aisles and there they are and you know you it, 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 I, I, again, it's just like a culture. It's a hobby that you do. And like the chase was sort of part of that experience. It's not anymore, but the chase aspect of Marvel Legends was definitely in it. And, and they weren't shipping as many units as they do now. They definitely ship a lot more in today's world than they did a couple of years ago. Really? I feel it's like less. My targets get like bare minimum Marvel Legends and it's always empty. That's why I have to pre-order them because I'm like, I'm going to, I'm not going to get it. That's interesting. Yeah, it's I think I had a similar situation with the Target in, in New York and you're you're in L.A. Yeah. So I think those may it's just I think it's a concentration of collectors, but mm. like the targets in Miami and in Pittsburgh, like we we find everything here. Like oh. Emma, the, the last Marvel Legends, Emma and Monet, they were peg warmers at Target yeah. in Miami. 
Emma was the only one that was a peg warmer here too, which that was one I pre-ordered because I was like, that one's definitely going to be popular. And I was really disappointed to see she was going for $10. <laughs> yeah, it, it was Cyclops. Cyclops was the one that I think everyone was after. Cyclops and Corsair were the two I couldn't pin down. Yeah, yeah or at least see in the wild. We're quite lucky here in the UK. I mean, in London, there's a store called Forbidden Planet that's like quite yeah. massive for just geek stuff. So every time we're around that area, we always just like pop in to have a look and I'd say they always have like the figures you guys are talking about. I'm like, oh, there's the that one or this one or I love how you just introduced Forbidden Planet to the Zoom of Nerds. Yes, uh, Forbidden Planet in the UK. I've never been, but it's obviously very infamous. We have one in New York, but no relation. Is it not? I I don't think they're related. I mean, listen, if if they are, they are. Someone can educate us in the comments, but I think they're two separate stores for all intents and purposes. So I've got another question. I'm, I feel like I'm going to play the role of the audience that don't collect and want to ask all the things <laughs> of collectors that we don't understand. So obviously they take up a lot of room, right? And I think like, you know, especially when you live in, in a bigger city and, and space is a premium. Yes. So what do you do when you... <laughs> Stop at me. Did he just what, do what this? Do you do... <laughs> hey, big commander. Um, and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and he just shakes his tits and like yeah. he gets more space. Um, how do you do? Like, do you just keep making more room to put those IKEA glass shelves, or do you like have a real internal struggle of like, okay, I now need to make a Sophie's choice of putting. Oh, 97 yeah. Cyclops or Captain America from Wave 3. Well, you, you would look at what Cyclops figures you have and which one you want to display and what goes in it. But yes, space is always an issue that always comes up in the Hasbro streams. And I think it's all up to like the individual person. I keep them neatly stowed away in this restoration hardware trunk I have. And I just wrap them in tissue wrap. And I just unfold them when I want to. So... Oh, so you don't display yours? Well, no, I display, but like the ones I don't display. Oh, you don't stowed. display. Yeah, okay. we put tissue paper. So, yeah. Um, do you do you use gloves too? Do you? Yeah. Do I use gloves? <laughs> you know what? I was horrified this one time when I opened up our boxes and we had the Walmart Wave Kitty Pride, which at the time we didn't have another Kitty Pride, and I picked her up and she fell apart in my hands, and I was so upset. And I was so angry. I mean, now we have like three different kitties. But at the time, this was the only kitty we had. This must have been like 2009, 2010. Um, but like, I think, yeah, it's up to you as a collector. And that's the beauty of it. You have all these different versions of the character. And which one do you want to display and which one you don't want to display? But I don't think most people would have a choice between two different characters. I would say it's the, no, no, but the version like, of the like, character. Or you have like, I don't know, you've got the Fantastic Four. Yeah. And now you have X-Men, but you've only got a shelf for one thing. Like, do you just put the other ones like away in a closet or Yeah, a closet. Just like how you would put away any things that you don't like really you want to keep around, but you don't have space for. Like to have I, out I've actually out. like sold a lot of mine because I've run out of space and the X-Men have taken up most of most of it. And I've even like whittled down the X-Men to just like the nineties runs i do have like a few of the modern characters but uh yeah i just don't have the space for it all. okay so you're like you're doing like a hammy and you're kind of yeah secondary market making mm -hmm. some money okay so what i'm hearing from you right now is that they're really expensive <laughs> and there's limited space to display them so i don't think this is really good us trying to sell you on legends um one you will create the space because they yeah. are such beautifully articulate characters. And think about having a shelf. So who's your favorite? Give me give me your favorite X-Man, Sean. Cyclops. Yes. So think about like an entire shelf or two dedicated to these figures of Cyclops. And you can pose them in every way, shape, or form that you want right there. And then you go to a con and you cosplay as him. And then you pick up the retro card X-Factor Cyclops and you bring him and you put him on display there. It is a vibe. It incites happiness. Womp, womp. <laughs> I hate you. So I'm sorry, what? Then what? So then you're just going to get him and display him in your ugly mirror? Yeah, if he fits. I have but, see. I do. Do, do you have twice, a Cyclops like, on your mirror? Yes. I do. I have the nineties, the nineties one, the new one that's right up there. No, the one he from has, like the one that was in like the, the the cassette, 
Like like it was like as if it was the cassette. Oh, okay. yes, the X Men the animated one, which yeah, I can VHS. never un the VHS ones. I can't yeah. unsee the fact that Flink talked about the cell shading around his crotch, and it looks like he wet himself. I know. After I listened to that episode, I noticed that all the time now. Um, but you yeah. also have one of the toy biz, and I think it was one. I think it's a projector. You have a ninety Cyclops right above Linka. So it would be. I'm looking at the camera here to the left. Oh, um, there's a there's a massive Cyclops down yeah, there. Yeah, that's the like Toy Biz era big, one. Yeah, um, and I'm sure that one goes for a pretty penny. But well, not anymore. He's covered in glue. So, um, I'm trying to see if you have any other Cyclops figures on no, there. No, no, there's only the two. Yeah. it's a mix of like it's not just Marvel, right? Like there's um, yeah a whole bunch of like early '90s cartoons which I love. Um, and those wrestling figures, you yeah. definitely, well, the you definitely one, like, grabbed a shopping cart and got yeah, them. Yeah, the WWE as, as one, it was like, uh, I think it was like nine pounds on eBay or something. They came with like a whole bunch of them. And I was like, well, that's that'll take up a lot of space. So, um, yeah, I don't Shirtless even know who men, why not? Exactly. Um, to the other half of the Zoom that collects legends, I'm curious, what are your favorite like legends that yeah, you, was gonna be you my purchased? Question. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Huh. I, I was waiting all my life for an Excalibur wave, and that's my favorite, the Excalibur box set. Oh, I love that one. Who's How do you that? feel about Kitty? It's Kitty, Britain, Captain Britain. I don't love her and face. Megan. <laughs> yeah, she looks like Fran Drescher, like <laughs> yeah. she's ready to go negotiate. <laughs> 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 I wish they would have given her the Alan Davis hair. Yeah, same. But uh, is there a new I, Kitty I that love, you could... I love... Um, I love Megan, and I already had the Nightcrawler from the, I think it was the Warlock wave. Was it the yeah. Warlock wave? No, I think it was Caliban wave. I think that Caliban was wave, Caliban yeah. wave. I think so. Hang on, let me double check that. So we just need Rachel. So Rachel hopefully is coming. I w would have, I w hoped, I had hoped that they would have announced her at MCM, but they didn't. Tommy, do you have a favorite figure? Yeah, I think my favorite figure is the Apocalypse figure. The oh, I'm sorry, he was a Wendigo. Apocalypse. Sorry, I, I cut um, you off. Oh, I forgot about that wave. Yeah, I think Apocalypse is the the my favorite figure. But second is the Beast. I love the Beast figure, not the character, just the figure. <laughs> the retro card um, Beast, right? The good, one good. that's that's based off of like the Joe Mad Scientist era. Uh, no. Well, yes, yes. It's the same. It's the same. Oh, from the wave, from the yeah. from the, from the wave, wave, yeah. The oh, okay. posability of that figure is amazing. It's incredible, yeah. Just what they could do with that figure and the sculpting and the size of it, like it's like a thick, chunky, hefty boy. Um, <laughs> I feel like we're learning so much about you right now. <laughs> I am a furry. There, are you happy? <laughs> um, you know what's a really the white big phoenix? <laughs> I've, I've got um Zangi from Street Fighter Two, like the oh. um storm. Storm collectible one. He's like a great figure. He's not oh. glued though, right? He's on top. No, he's not glued. Yeah, he's just oh don't. Top. Those so, so you didn't, the ones so on top you didn't glue because you do love those figures. There's no space for them. Well, also like because it's easier to like if I glue them, then they're permanent. Whereas like if something new and cool comes out, it's much easier to like just put on the top and move someone else off. Yeah. So I had a Dormammu at the top from Hero Clicks, but he was like a. He was like one of the giant hero clicks, mm -hmm. and he got pulled off recently to make room for uh, the Loki that's up there. Did you have the hero clicks like X Men bases? Yes. Yeah, I, I had. If it did, if I had it, yes, I had it. If it was a hero click thing, I <laughs> yeah. was obsessed. Um, the hero clicks I have. The only one I got was when I worked at Marvel. They had like a Marvel store, and you can go in and buy all the Marvel merch for like a dollar or two if you were an employee. And I got the Hero Clicks Dark Phoenix. Oh wow, that was like quite expensive back in the day. I mean, it probably still is. Yeah, um, but I love it. So it's like the huge Phoenix effect, yeah, and yeah. then little Jean Grey right there. It's gorgeous. I wonder how much she is going for. I, I have that one too. Yeah, hang on. Let's see. Hero. I have a little go. shelf with all of the with all the little team bases, and the Phoenix is in the middle. And we I've got should the Hero Clicks Galactus down there. Really? Yeah. I didn't know there was a. Oh, it's only going for sixty bucks now. But yeah, it was quite expensive in the back back in the day. I didn't. I, and by the way, we had Phoenix Force Creations on, and I forgot that Sean, you collected oh, yeah. clicks and you commissioned. From oh yeah, Mike has made me so many hero clicks like fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they're all actually in my closet. So if anybody loves hero clicks and wants a Mike commission, 
I'll flip on the secondary market. <laughs> <laughs> Make some money. Yeah, no, they're so gorgeous. The... I mean, like if you obviously his like action. So you did collect at one point. Yeah, so you do collect. So yeah. you do understand the spark of collecting, though. Yeah, but it was like. I guess with Hero Clicks, there was like a game to it, right? So you could play and you could like create, you know, you could get four people and do a big battle royal and it can, you know, it's something to do during the evening. Mm-hmm. And they're small enough that you can hide your shame when people come over to your house. Do you think that's what it boils down to with the final boss? That's what we're going to call your husband going forward, the final <laughs> boss. Do you think that's what it boils down to? Like if people, because you do host a lot of like parties at your place. Yeah. Do you think people, look, because I actually, had a similar situation where I had my boss and his girl or now girlfriend or wife come over. Oh, Scott's here. How funny. Um, and she was like, they went into my geek room and Lucas grabbed my Marvel Legends Psylocke. And he's here like, Paul, who's this tiny Asian woman that you have on display in your study? And I'm like, and Hammy, you've met Lucas. And yeah. you know, he, he was not being facetious when he said this. He was being extremely earnest. And I had no response for him other than that's Psylocke. How do you not know who Psylocke is? And he just nodded at me. Oh, look who decided to join us. I've been in court for like <laughs> half a day and been in traffic. So hello to everyone else. Paul, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, that's are Mr. you Scott here? Free. Are you here to defend me? Or are you here to gang up on me like like the rest of them? Uh, who's paying? <laughs> Atta boy, that's a real lawyer if I ever there heard we one. Go. Scott, where do you oh land God. on Marvel Legends? Uh, I am pro Marvel Legends. Um, it, and like, what, what, where do I land? Like, do you collect? Oh, yeah, I got the whole uh wall of shame over there full of uh. Full of legends. Um, and does your does, is your husband a fan of like geek stuff? No, that's why I hide a bunch of them in my desk so he doesn't find those. Like, okay, oh. there's the super adaptoid. <laughs> um, there's oh, this Deadpool. isn't gonna win us any points. <laughs> See, because I guess wait. So this is also another thing. If you're a collector like that, you put them on displays. I feel like if you're in a relationship where you live with a roommate or whatever, you kind of all need to be on board for it. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly joking. He's on board within within reason. Um, yeah, Jeff is Jeff is on board. Jeff is a big collector as well, so we can create that space and we want it there. Your final boss just isn't on there, right? He doesn't. Yeah. He's not a fan. It's not that like. I don't think, you know, like there's no shame in it. And I don't think, I think everybody should display what they love. And, you know, there's no one in my life that doesn't know that I'm a huge geek. I mean, it's public that I'm on this podcast. But um, yeah, I just don't think he'd want the like aesthetic in the house to match so, the other stuff. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair. Like I try to keep my collections in my office and in my cosplay room and then. And my bedroom. He has a cosplay um, room. He's got a room dedicated so, to cosplay. So nothing, it... nothing has spilled out into the main part of the house. I right. But yes. I think that's fair, though. Like, no one's advocating to have Marvel Legends right there in your entryway. And when people come by, yeah. they're like, you're like, look at my toys there. No, like, you have a geek room, just like you have any other, like, room. And, like, you 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 deck it out. And it's really nice. So it's there's no shame or anything. It's just all there. Oh. So I, I hope is is this on video or are we being recorded on video? Yeah, we have video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well you can edit this out. Because I'm... No, no, no. We're keeping that right there. Past it. Oh yeah, that's hot. Can you, can you do the thing where you lock it on his screen so it's just <laughs> him the whole time doing this? Oh, the, uh, the girls. Uh... Well, you had to do the shake that Hammy's been doing like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every time that Varian lad talks about his. Living in the big city. What I you live in the well? No, you don't. But... No, I don't live in the big city. <laughs> Luigi and Paul and Scott do. So, well, I yeah. live in the suburbs of the big city, so I'm not quite in the big city. I, I uh, yeah, but I know what I know what rents cost in West Hollywood. It's the same problem. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, we've had a challenge in the Miami loft 
displaying the figures because it's a loft area and we don't yeah it, i'm gonna give it to you sean that we've been like oh are we just gonna have people come in and here are our my mom calls them muñequitos which is spanish for little toys so like here are muñequitos yay so we we did move them upstairs but for our new york place i think we've agreed that we're just gonna deck that all out in just like marvel legends so it's paul you, you don't have anything geeky or x-men related in your like living space then well not by choice we were remodeling so yeah. we got it we got it our loft to the block and now that it's done um the idea is the second floor we would just have our legends on display but we're probably just going to take all of our geek stuff to the apartment we just signed for today back in new york so that's probably where our geek space is going to be and we're going to fully deck that out as geek stuff and so people can the those tricks from grinder can come over and i'll be like look at my muñequitos right here <laughs> wrong <laughs> muñequitos i think i think we're not expecting those ones <laughs> <laughs> wrong muñequitos they definitely yeah. did not want those but yeah. i i definitely have come so i had a situation where for Probably up until the pandemic, I re I did refuse to have any geek stuff displayed in our apartment. And Jeff, but was where did one... you put your figures then? If you yeah. were a collector, yeah, exactly. So we would just get them, and I'd be like, "This is so great!" And then I put them in a drawer or in the closet, and that's it. So it's like a dirty shame. And it wasn't until the pandemic that we were like, "Let's display everything." And and in fairness, Jeff always wanted to display them, and I would always fight with him about displaying it. So I I am the villain of that story. But I just think at a certain age, you're like, "This is what makes me happy." I like being surrounded by my books and my action figures, and fuck whoever will come so in and judge it. I'm taking it you haven't delved into like sideshow or anything like that. I have, yo, I do have sideshows. So yes, I would buy the statues, keep them in their box, and then just put them in the closet. Wait, what sideshow? Sideshow collectibles. They're like statues. Yeah. Oh, like the fancy statues. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. fancy stores. statues. Okay. Yeah, I have Bowens. I have, um, I have the X Men versus Sentinel. I have all three of those dioramas. Ooh. Yeah. So they've always just been historically in boxes in my in my apartment yeah. until we had the geek room at our last place. But now we're going to fully display all that. Stuff. So I feel like that's the dream is to have like if you know in an ideal world you have a really big place and you can have like a room that's like your office or whatever, and then just like kit it out to the max. Like what um what's the guy Joe? I can never pronounce his last name. The guy loves Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, who was in Magic Mike. Mangiello. Mangiello. Yeah. Man and he, in his basement, he's got like, it kitted out to play D&D. And it just looks absolutely amazing. But apparently, like, because he's dating Sofia Vergara, or if they're married, I don't know. But they're she's married. like, oh, you can I only have the wedding. stuff. Yeah, you can only have the stuff in that one room. So I feel like, you know, but I guess you have to be a celebrity and just have a massive house. and. Rooms yeah, I mean, listen, I would love an entire wing of my house dedicated to, like, Marvel Legends. But <laughs> yeah, it, it for for us it's taking over the house because like, we have sideshows like our our nicer stuff like the sideshows those are displayed in the main part of the house and we have our nice art uh, hanging on the walls. I so want to go to like the Luigi Mansion. Yeah, out. but sometimes we're like maybe it's a little much. Like when we have uh, friend friends come over that are not X Men fans, I think they're a little like wow, this is a lot. <laughs> Link? And do they ask you? Like, is that like a point of conversation all the time? Um, it's, yeah. Some have asked, like, "Oh, what, what is, what is all of this?" Link, like, when you get into his house, his living room, he has like the Sanderson sisters. He has like a lot of collectibles and stuff on display, but it's very neatly organized, so it actually yeah. looks really cool the way he has it it's not just like you have toys on the floor yeah. it's like they're meticulously displayed and properly like put there yeah i also try to keep it like museum quality like on nice yeah. shelves and nice lighting and everything how yeah. often do you dust them i feel like that must be a problem if they're all i, I kind of have a little bit of a ocd problem so i dust once a week like but that was like I, i've done that since i was a kid i would dust my room as a kid, one and one you like week. take them down off the stand. Yeah, like, each one. Wow, we, that feels like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. We, <laughs> but had, I like doing it. We had the SH Figure Arts Sailor Moon figures on display in our bedroom a couple years ago, 
And Luigi, do you have the SH Figure Arts Sailor I do. Moon? <laughs> okay, so Mars we also have a Sailor Moon problem too. <laughs> so Mars comes with I forgot what her little white like papers are. What are they called? Um, but you know, it's like really yeah, small. the Shinto papers. Yeah, yeah, the Shinto papers. And we had a maid at the time, and she dusted the figures, knocked them all over. The Shinto figure like part fell on the floor, and she vacuumed it up. So <gasps> we don't allow anyone to touch the figures unless it's like me or jeff i know i had to buy an entire new one and those shits were like 90 dollars. i was so upset yeah yeah. i keep all mine in glass cases so (laughs) there is very limited dusting if i reorganize a shelf i'll go through and dust them but typically they don't need to be dusted and i feel like Mm -hmm. go 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 no no say your your snide little call i wasn't gonna say snide anything at all (laughs) Um, I don't think we're selling you on this, uh, because all these other miserable monsters aren't collecting properly, <laughs> but there is an appropriate way to collect. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Sorry. Teach us. I haven't said anything, but yeah, you're probably <laughs> right. <laughs> you're pro- probably right. I, it's, what's it's, the right it way? Thrill. It is. So Scott, how about this? So Wait the a minute. The right way is not to do it. Wait, Scott, Scott, <laughs> you fair. recently got in, into Marvel Legends because when we first started doing Apocalypse, you weren't really collecting. And now you're actually like pre-ordering the figures. What what was that shift for you? Why are you now collecting the figures? Uh, I decided I wasn't wasting enough money on very expensive Warhammer 40k uh, stuff. And I figured I have additional money and I should just waste that on more uh collectibles um and no it was like they honestly started to release like characters and figures that i was actually like interested in it's like you know with respect to like scott summers there's only so many cyclopses you can get and then it's like they started to release you know like Krakoa era stuff and it was it was much more like interesting to me so who's your favorite figure um i mean i like I'm, I'm biased. I, I love the Quentin Choir. Um, he sits on my desk, and um, people don't ask questions about that. <laughs> and, um, I don't know. Probably that. Uh, a bunch of the Venoms. I have multiple Venoms. Uh, the recent one, I forget which box it was in. Uh, it's really good. It's got Eddie Brock like half transformed. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen the one. Yeah, pretty good. So you're a recent convert then, like in the last few years? Post-COVID, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And I feel like the internet broke. I'm just looking at your the image you sent Hammy in our chat here. The mm. internet broke when that when that um, Hellfire box set went on sale. Everyone started going there. Look at Hammy's collection. Wow, they're really well, like... Look at that. Yeah. I mean, that's so beautiful. This is the way you... Co- so, so let's get this straight. This is not like where it starts. You become addicted and you buy everything and you waste all your money. But then you figure out who your favorites are and you start actually like... You put them in a glass shelf so you don't have to dust. Mm-hmm. You organize them in a way... If you want to super glue them, you can. But you organize them in a way that they look like a statue and you wouldn't be yeah. like ashamed to display them mm-hmm. in that way. And then you wait till you wait, like I have Excalibur up, so bad example, but like I wish Excalibur wasn't up because the set's not finished. So once you have every character and Hasbro is finally like, we'll do a Rachel Summers, ha ha, or like we'll give you your Wolf Spain or your Feral, you set it up, you make it look the way you want it to be, and you never touch it again. And it basically becomes a statue. Like it becomes that museum piece that you like would show someone. But the added side is you get to be like, I designed this. I X Y Z. I think I get that where it's like if you have an artistic kind of flair and can put them in poses or kind of create your own diorama, I could see kind of the appeal of that. Um, I mean, if anybody can see the photos, if you put them up, they spring of Hamis. Um, way he's oh, done. Oh, sorry. They look really the, cool. These aren't mine. These are what I've inspired. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, taking, oh. Taking credit for something else. Yours. <laughs> and what's you the can like? Cut this part out if you want. <laughs> can are you, you getting that's a buddy shot? That's where I start doing OnlyFans content. I feel oh, like 
if I had them or like the few that I have, I just buy like the random characters I love. So if you think uh, I've got Cyclops, I've got Hercules, I've got Loki, like the modern Loki kind of God of Stories version. I've got Captain Marvel. And yeah. that's, oh, and I've got Namor. So like some of my favorite characters, but they don't really like go together in a display. They're mm -hmm. kind of like a random assortment of people. Mm -hmm. Is that like a no, no for collectible? For no, you can do it. no, you can do it any way you want. You yeah. can display anything, however you want. I think that, I think what I, I want to pull on what Scott said. And the reason why he's collecting now is because they're doing Krakoan era and he loves Krakoan, the Krakoan era very much. And Kid Omega, it's nice to have a, your character there and you love the character and it inspires a lot of happiness for you yeah like i've got like five jamie madroxes up on the shelf uh and they're all pointing at each other uh which i thought <laughs> was funny i don't know if that was the best use of my money but um you know it's it's get get stuff that you enjoy get stuff that you know brings you joy or whatever do you guys ever go through pick up a figure go does this spark joy and then if it doesn't, you put him in the, the yeah. Sell on eBay. Yeah, the yeah. the Annihilus Wave Emma Frost. That was the only figure we had for the longest time. And I picked her up a couple years ago and I was like, this figure doesn't bring me any joy. And I sold her for four ninety nine on eBay. Fair. That's it. There you go. I mean, you know which figures like I do have, actually. Do you remember when the original Fantastic Four movie came out? So we're talking 2000 yes. and something i love those figures <laughs> so the, this is like back in the day when people would still listen to the radio and i was driving to work and it was like call into the radio or we've got a question about the fantastic four call in to win and the question was ready what is the fictional country that dr doom rules <gasps> yeah so i called in being like it's latveria um and i was all excited like oh you know like radio contest great what am i gonna win and I won a um, basically like the set of action figures from that movie. Uh, so I've got them all still pristine in a box in the basement of my friend's house in Montreal. <laughs> wow. I First of all, the, those figures were beautiful. We had them as well in our first New York apartment. And we put them on top of our TV because back then you had the bigger TVs. And we would play the Fantastic Four movie tie-in video game. It was so nice. Well, if any series. of you boys want them, next time I'm back in Montreal, I'll pick them up and. I guess I'm close, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll <laughs> like, I'll me. take it. Hammy's going to drive in the Hammy Mobile to go pick it up. Yeah, the airplane. <laughs> um, I knocked over every single one of my figures when I tried to take a picture of oh, them. Oh no! Oh my and god! I'm getting OCD out of this fucking miserable hobby. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I the worst feeling in the world is waking up and seeing all the figures like had fallen over the night before. It's terrible. That happens so, so often. Actually, I have um, from Mortal Kombat, the Kintaro one from Storm Collectibles. I think that's who makes it. It's like a really kind of big, cool Kintaro. And I was at work. Every here, but... gay just glazed over when you started talking about this. Everyone's like, yeah, Mortal <laughs> Kombat. No? <laughs> All right, I love Mortal Kombat. I feel like most people know mortal kombat he's like he's not goro the one with the four arms he's the one with the four arms from mortal kombat 2 who's got like the tiger print who's like way cooler mm -hmm. and um i think i bought it i bought it on ebay on like i don't know boxing day or cyber monday or something like, like that um and he just like he was at the top kind of posed like flexing his forearms and i was just working from home and he fell off and his leg like or his foot smashed off and now I'm really disappointed because he was not like a cheap figure, and I'm like, oh, you, you can always glue it back on. on. <laughs> yeah, he's still there. He's over. He's in a. Um, yeah, he's over there. Put away. I I had a Bowen Wanda statue of her like this in her big old cape displayed in our geek room at our last apartment, and I woke up one morning, and because the figure wasn't really balanced, it's just a design flaw. She had fallen from the top shelf on the floor and shattered everywhere. <gasps> And I want to give a heartbreaking because it's a beautiful statue. And I want to give a shout out to the statue collector because he he lives in New Jersey and he was sending me people on like who I should go to and, and have fixed. Ultimately, I just put her back in the box. And I was like, I'll get to that later. And I never <laughs> did. But it was sad. Yeah.
So I don't know. Question... I, don't, I don't think we've sold you on this. <laughs> you guys, I, I, we haven't sold me on this. I, I think know. I'm, I'm like, yeah. Oh, where, where this podcast ends is all of a sudden <laughs> I make you all re-question your collectibles and <laughs> yeah, I don't know start about saving this your money. I think you <laughs> just have to have a deep love for these characters and want to display them. That's that's where I I I think the essence of my love for Legends is fair. I mean, I get it. I get the joy. Of, like, I, and you have that, by the way, except it's on a, you just super glue them on a mirror. So yeah, you, in a way I, you do collect figures. In a way so you in do. A, yeah, I think I'm just yeah. a lot, because of the the lack of space and it, could, it has to fit on there. And if I, you know, it's kind of one in, one out at this point, I think I have to really love the figure. So I think I'm going to get Bullseye um, and find a place to put him. And I quite like, what's it, Novar? Is the new, like, mm -hmm. he's a... Um, I love that character, so I might try to fit him on, but I don't know if I'm sold on like getting everyone that comes out of every wave. And yeah, it sounds like you're stuck in the middle. Like you don't love enough characters to make like a foot because the glass cases are only about a foot and a quarter by a foot and a quarter, this so you don't IKEA need a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. ones I have, they're like this wide, so you don't need a lot of space. But you would want to fill it, and I don't think you have enough characters yeah. above to fill it, so it doesn't make sense for you to to do that. But in the future, maybe, maybe. we're going to convert you on this going forward. It's like this a is an ongoing process. Yes, we well, are going to get have to like a we're cosmic take one Legends with Hunting. Doom and stuff, and then you can yeah. have just like a favorites or one where it's like just people you've cosplayed as before. So you've got Namor, you've got Bullseye, you've got Scott, you've got, well, not Scott, you've got Cyclops. <laughs> you can, um, oh my God, I think for Christmas, we all get each other or we get Power of X-Men, Custom Marvel Legends. They do the selfie series. Do they? Yeah. So you can actually be a figure. I know I've tried it on the app. It looks atrocious. <laughs> Hammy's like, don't do it. <laughs> not Wait, a have chance. You have you had it? <laughs> We don't have it in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but why can't you just do it and have it sent to Dayspring in the States? I mean, I could. I could. I could. I, could, I, could just ship I would be too. assuming I'm reliable and I would get the package. And have it shipped to Scott or Luigi. Scott Sock. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. That, that tracks. Uh, we, we were at New York Comic Con like last year, Scott, and we were with Pedro. And Pedro all of a sudden was like, oh, I had to go pick up something for Flink. And I was like, what are you picking up for him? And he's like, oh, Flink just wants this exclusive. And I remember I looked at Pedro and I was like, why didn't Flink ask me to pick it up? And Pedro just looked at you, Scott, and then looked at me and was like, listen, you're just good for pointing the camera and taking selfies. Okay, let me grab this one. Um, I'm going to take your word on that because we were <laughs> so fairly drunk during New York Comic Con. So was that this year? No, last year. Last oh, year. We're weird. always drunk at Comic Con is the main theme here. Do you guys have a figure that doesn't like at this point now, it feels like from an outside collector, like they've made every barring Rachel Summers, who if anybody's listened to this podcast has heard enough that they've that figure's not been created yet. Is there any figure that like hasn't been yes. made that you are dying to have? Yes, there's other, like, than, other than Rachel Summers. No, yes, Rachel Summers being just one of many. Okay, so what's the top one? You you can wave a one, and Hasbro creates this figure. What are you making? I would do Doug, Doug, Doug with the warlock arm and the sword from Ten of Swords, Marvel Legends, Doug Ramsey, which we still haven't gotten. All right. Luigi? I would do... I need Feral to complete my X-Force team. <laughs> the hot pink cat lady. Yes, the hot pink cat lady. And then I would also love a uh, series from yeah. uh, Excalibur. Oh my god! Yes, I mean, I, I want um, generic New Mutants male body because yes. we have generic New Mutants yes. female body, and you can just put different heads on it to make a team, and they have no male body for that yet. So that's two and a half years one. ago, Ryan Ting promised that was coming. He promised. It's it literally the easiest figure they could make. There is no easier figure for them to make. It has People no sculpting buy at all. Multiples. Yeah, it's it's cash anyway. That's my that's my number one. Scott, but two well, two part answer. Uh, one Exodus. I don't think we've had. Does he not exist? I'm no, surprised. there's no Exodus. Oh, Exodus. I know he's the only council member that. Did, well, OG council members. 
and um also i want like the original like mutant liberation front like wild side <laughs> forearm um, tempo tempo all of them box set so there sean there's quite a few figures that haven't okay. been done there what you about go. you sean if, the, if you could buy any figure any marvel legends figure which one would you buy so I think all the characters I love have been made. Okay. What do I, do you know? What I think would be an amazing figure if what? they did like um like the giant man where you have to like uh, back it. Yeah. And you get an ego, the living planet, oh. and you just be like massive, and like parts of him could come off, and you could put people on him. And I would I mean, buy that, cool. that Doctor Doom that you talked about during our costumes episode. The like blue Doctor Doom, oh. blue and. Yes, actually, I changed my answer. Doctor Doom twenty ninety nine. Yeah, oh, that's, that's I would love time. twenty. I would love X Men figures of twenty ninety nine. I can't believe uh, they have not done. Have they not done one? They've done Toy Biz, but they haven't done. They haven't done in a uh, Doom twenty ninety nine Toy Biz one. No, uh, Sean is also they, they have never for done a, uh, Goblin Prince. Oh yeah, legend. I'd buy a Goblin <laughs> Prince one absolutely. Metal Empire. A, wait, there is a figure of Doom twenty ninety nine. Oh wait, maybe this is like a custom. No. No, there. Are, no. I, I don't. I can't speak to the five-inch toy biz line, but for Marvel Legends, there are no twenty ninety-nine. Just oh no, it says custom. There you yeah, go. this looks I really need... good. All right, where can the folks at home hit all of you up? Let's start with you, Scott. Well, I, I have one last point. Uh, I do not want to see a Wiccan and Hulkling because Twink should suffer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, those people are going to come after me now. Um, <laughs> You can find me, Mr. Scott Free, uh, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever the fuck Elon's calling it. And uh, yeah. You can find me at hammy73 uh, on Instagram or michael.ham.cosplay for all my cosplay work. And you can find me at the only, ha- only ham73 on X and uh, patreon.com slash michaelham and. LA Comic Con at the end of this month. Oh, yes, we're wait. Luigi's not going to Comic Con anymore. Uh, I'm unfortunately. <laughs> I was going, going to... and then I wasn't going, and now I'm Japan, going to right? You yeah, going to Japan. Going to Japan. Yeah. yeah, I got Dude. plane tickets for four hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Wow. Yeah, I would go to Japan for four hundred twenty-eight dollars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was on a decent airline, not a bad airline either. So, I'm right. Well, but we're you can miss find you at LA Comic Con. Me. Super X Luigi on all the socials, IG, all the other ones. You can find me on Instagram at Ludvarian Lad. And I'm on Instagram at Power of X Men and YouTube. And we are going to be at LA Comic Con hosting a panel with the one and only Lenore Zan. Me, Scott, and Michelle will be in conversation with Lenore. I'll Ooh. be in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be in the UK. Wah, wah. <laughs> Well, well, maybe if you're a Marvel Legends collector. <laughs> <laughs>